When I have a discussion with a proselytizer who is telling me I need to accept Jesus Christ as my savior or I'll burn in hell for eternity, I try to keep the dialogue open by responding that I am interested in hearing more because after all, who would want to burn in hell for eternity? But then I'll add that this threat is not something that's immediately evident. Um, to return to my previous example, it's not at all in the same category as, well, don't sit on that chair, there are attacks on it. Instead, the warning uh, about needing to accept Christ as Savior rests on four ground premises that all have to be true in order for this threat to have meaning, have any kind of meaning to it. First of all, there has to be some sort of creator. Second, this creator can't be just some kind of remote deity that kick-started the universe with a big bang and then took a hands-off approach. Instead, this has to be a communicative creator, a published author even, one that has inspired humans to write some sort of text that tells his or her story. Third premise that has to be true is that in trying to make sense out of the fact that there are thousands of religions out there all claiming to possess um, insight to divine knowledge, we have to reject the popular New Age kind of idea that all different religions are just different roads to the same deity. Instead, we have to embrace the fundamentalist type of perspective that one religion really was inspired by the, by the Almighty and all the thousands of rival religions, well, we can just dismiss those as coming from nowhere but the fertile human imagination. And this leads to the fourth premise, which is that of all those thousands of religions out there, the one religion that does re represent God's will is Christianity. So these four premises could be thought of uh, building blocks or stages that can lead up to the conclusion that I need to accept Christ if I want to escape eternal torment. So to use the Socratic method, what I tell proselytizers is that I'm willing to accept the first three premises. That is, at least for the sake of argument, I'll accept the premises that, um, let's say there is a creator, let's say this creator is a communicative one, you know, his books are available on Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, and, but that just one religion was really delivered to us from divinity and the rest are just creations of the human imagination. Oh, so now this is where my agreement halts at this level of knowing how I can distinguish between the thousands of religions just thought of by people versus that one faith that was truly divinely dictated. And just to keep things as conducive to dialogue as possible, I let the proselytizer know that if there was a creator of the universe that provided us with specific directions and I knew what those directions were, then I, yes, I would certainly obey them. Um, I don't even know, uh, disobey much lesser authority figures, like say the cop who has a siren on and uh, wants me to pull my car over. So just as I'm not gonna argue with anyone who's armed with a badge and a billy club and a gun, I'd be much, even, I'd be all that much more, uh, less likely <laughs> to argue with the Almighty. If there's a God that wants me to abstain from all work on Saturdays, or wants me to consider homosexuality as an abomination, or wants me to grow my beard long, or wants me to obey the caste system, um, well, I would definitely do it. Um, now, of course, if there's a single armed cop before me barking out orders, there's no confusion on who I have to obey. But to, in an attempt to draw a parallel to organized religions, it's like there are multiple middlemen, middlemen all before me, all claiming to represent different invisible cops. And all these different invisible cops all have different directions. And what's worse, only one middleman represents the real invisible cop, and the rest of the middlemen represent only human delusion. So the question is, how can I distinguish between these different middlemen? Or in other words, how can we tell if a religion was just made up by our fallible fellow humans? Uh, and that will be the subject of part four.